Hey, what is going on guys? Uh, coming at you with an updated deck profile that has been long overdue, and that is of my Yosen Juice uh, from March 2016. Um, so this is one of my uh, all-time favorite decks. Um, it's one that's actually gotten me the most success at locals. I believe it's won a total of four uh, local tournaments. Um, it was actually really good, in my opinion, uh, during the Secret Forces format with uh, Necroz, Spiritual Beast, um, you know, Cleaforge were still good, Shadal's Brain Abyss, so on and so forth. Um, this deck had a very good matchup against Necroz, um, had some decent matchups overall against most everything else. Um, you know, it's one bad matchup, I would say it would probably be Cleaforts, but, you know, still a, a decent matchup that was winnable. Um, and the deck hasn't really been touched since then, but just, you know, things have gotten a lot better, uh, since then. And obviously, um, looking at the meta decks now, um, you have a really bad matchup against Cosmo, especially with their big ships not being able to be targeted. Um, you have Monarchs, uh, they're able to summon Majesty's Fiend on you, which can uh, just potentially win the game right there. Um, and Pepe, um, it is a decent matchup, but it's still one that can give you problems, um, just depending on how well they start and the build. Because, uh, of course, they, you know, if you're playing the Ariadne build going first and search like Solemn Strike or Solemn Warning, then they put you in a pretty tough spot. So... But I still think the deck is pretty good. Uh, I can still win you locals. Um, if you build it right and prepare yourself well enough for the meta, you could potentially do well at a regionals with it. I mean, I would never say that uh, anything's impossible in this game, but you know, still, unfortunately, not as good as it was, but still a really fun deck that I do uh, still enjoy to this day. Um, so starting off the deck profile, uh, for the monsters, we have the triple Yosenju, comma one, uh, triple comma two, and triple comma three, uh, pretty standard for pretty much any variant of your Yosenju's. Um, this one specifically being more of a pure variant. Um, obviously, you could go towards like the Yosenju Kaiju variant. You can go more towards an anti-meta variant with like Thunder King Rai and Fossil Dino and so on and so forth. But I personally prefer the um, pure Yosenju since it's a bit more consistent um, in my opinion. Uh, plus, being able to search the counter trap is a really good way to uh, counter Solemn Strike. Uh, then we have the two Yosenju Sujik, uh, basically like a Kalut for Yosenju's, giving them that thousand boost. Um, whether it's uh, with its monster effect on the field or being able to discard from the hand, uh, so it's really good for that. And then for the final monster, we had the two Shinshu L. Um, this is something you really only play if you're playing the counter trap. Um, it's something that I've, <clears throat> excuse me, gone back and forth between uh, playing a two or a three. Um, but since I have uh, a pretty good number of uh, draw and search cards in here. Um, I did decide to cut it down to two because it's really its only purpose is, um, you know, to make the counter trap live and occasionally it'll help you protect, uh, protect your send juice from like targeting and destruction, but it doesn't really come up as often anymore. Um, so that's it for monsters. Uh, for spells, we have the triple 10 key to search out, um, all our send juice except for Shinshu L. Um, the triple pod duality, uh, we really don't spell seven much, um, at all with this deck. You really only do go into the extra deck if you absolutely have to. Uh, so three duality is just really good for digging uh, for those combo pieces we need. Uh, the triple upstart goblin uh, so is just to dig to the uh, into the deck even deeper. Um, you need to get to those important back row cards to stop your opponent's plays. So you need to make sure that you get multiple Yosen juice so you can make your own plays on your turn, uh, get to the counter trap, so on and so forth. Uh, then we have two main deck MSTs. Um, I feel like there's enough, uh, you know, kind of pesky back row out there to where it's worth maining two MSTs. Um, obviously, you know, things like Twin Twisters, People Main, um, you know, there's Solemn Strike that I mentioned before, Solemn Warning, um, you know, Cosmos, they have Call of the Haunted, they have Cosmojo, so on and so forth. So I feel like at least two MSTs worthwhile in the main. And um, this is not a deck that you'd want to play Twin Twisters with because there's really nothing you want to discard. Uh, you really go minus doing that. Uh, plus, a lot of times you're not really left with the hand. Um, well, sometimes you're not left with the hand, depending on if you have your Senjus or not. Um, so that's why MST in this uh, deck specifically is better than Twin Twister. Uh, then for one of us, we had the one Dimensional Fissure, uh, the one Dark Hole, and the one Regeki. Um, I decided to put in Dimensional Fissure in here because I feel like it's actually kind of underrated right now, along with Macrocosmos against the meta. Um, Against uh, Monarchs, you know, you don't get any of their monster uh, effects in the graveyard. They don't get Erebus, they don't get Eidos or Idea. Um, you know, you don't get any of that. Um, against Cosmo, um, a lot of them, well, pretty much all of them now have gone towards a Tin Can variant, so they don't get the dump to the graveyard off of Tin Can. They don't get the Call of the Haunted, anything like that. Um, also, in the Pepe matchup, you know, when you clear uh, their Pendulums, um, they'll get banished instead of being put on the extra deck. And uh, also... Uh, means that they can't Valor you, whether it's a Monarch matchup or a Pepe matchup, they won't be able to Valor you, which is pretty important. So that's why I personally like Dimensional Fissure. And then Dark Hole Regeki is just important because um, 
especially in the Cosmo matchup, you have a hard time getting over their big ships. So Dark Hole Regeki at least uh, ensures that you can get over them for the time being, um, especially combined with uh, Dimensional Fissure and uh, Macro Cosmos uh, can really just put them in a bad spot. Um, so that is it for spells. Uh, for traps, we have the Triple Yosenju Secret Move. Um, this basically is a solemn judgment uh, for the deck uh, that is searchable off of comma free. Um, of course, the only problem is that you have to have a Yosenju card on field uh, to be able to activate it. Uh, but that is why you do play the Shinshu L to make sure you can do that. And also uh, all the draw cards to uh, try to get to the combo of Shinshu L and Secret Move. Uh, then we have the two lose one turn. Um, obviously not as good against Monarchs, but you know still pretty good against Cosmos as it at least puts you know their ships in defense mode. Um, good against Pepe. Um, again, they really can't make aggressive plays, and their deck's all about spell summoning. Uh, it can be pretty good, um, you know, in certain situations against the Phantom Knight, Burning Abyss deck. Uh, really good against Mermail since they're all about OTKing, so uh, it doesn't really affect your deck at all. So that's why I run a two lose one turn. Uh, then we have the two Mirror Force. Um, of course, a lot of times you're left with no monsters on board for your opponent's turn, so you need something to be able to protect, protect yourself in battle. And this, especially combined with Defissure or Macrocosmos, can just blow out the opponent. Uh, then speaking of, for one of us, we had the one Macrocosmos, uh, the one Chaos Trap Hole, one Solemn Strike, one Solemn Morning, uh, one Torrental Tribute, and then finally the one Vanity's Emptiness. Um, I used to play Fiendish Chains uh, with this deck. Um, if I owned, uh, well, I only had the one Ultimate Rare Fiendish Chain, but if I owned more, I'd consider playing it. But I don't really find it as good of a card as you know it was when this deck was in its prime. Uh, Solemn Strike is obviously the better card, but you know a, a bit more expensive. Uh, in fact, I only own the one, which is why I'm only playing one. Um, and then in place of, like, say, a second Solemn Strike, I decided to put in Chaos Trap Hole, uh, just because a lot of the relevant decks out there do play light and dark based monsters, uh, whether it's Monarchs, uh, Cosmos, uh, Pepe still have a lot of light and dark based monsters, um, you know, Phantom Knight, Burning Abyss, they have a lot of those, so I feel like Chaos Trap Hole hits enough to where it's worth at least the one uh, slot in the main deck, and I do also side the second. Um, so that is it for the main deck. A uh, total of 40 cards. Um, it's 13 monsters, uh, 14 spells, and 13 traps. Uh, now on to the extra deck. Um, so starting off, we have not one, but two Lightning Chidori. Um, I actually have had a few situations when I used to play this deck where I wish I had a second Chidori. And with its reprint and premium gold, it's a lot easier to get your hands on. So, you know, And you have a lot of room in the extra deck to work with since you don't go into it that much. So I figured why not play the second Chidori. Uh, then for upper rank fours, we have Abyss Dweller, um, Tiger King, uh, Karen Gorgon for protecting the Floodgates. Um, not as good anymore since you know, Twin Twister exists, but it still can be decent for, um, like, say, against Cosmo, if you have Imperial Iron Wall up, it at least prevents like them from you know, getting those one-off targeting effects. Um, you have to get around it. Uh, Castell, Dark Rebellion, uh, Diamond Dire Wolf, uh, the two Gaga -Ga -Ga Cowboy, um, I have had a lot of situations in this deck where I've gotten, say, at least 6,400 damage off of, like, three or four Yosenju attacks. Well, actually, it would be four Yosenju attacks, at least four, and then uh, it puts them in range to where you can game them with double Cowboys, so that's why I do play the second. Uh, the one Samurai, um, really the only time it's relevant is if you're using, like, a Shinshu L plus a number Yosenju to make this, uh, since a lot of times, you know, two Yosenjus um, add up to about as much damage as Samurai, but... If you're using Chinchu L, it can get you that extra damage you sometimes need for game. Uh, the one Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon, uh, 101 Sound on Arc, 103 Ragna Zero. Um, not really a good card right now, but I guess if you face a mirror, it wouldn't be too bad. Uh, then finally, we have the YCS Prize card itself, the number 106 Giant Hand. Um, obviously, it can just be a good card, especially if you're going first, say, against Pepe. Uh, it can be a nice uh, card to sit on. Um, you really need to get, you know, a monster effect uh, negated um, that you can negate with Giant Hand. You can obviously go into it, so Giant Hand's pretty good. Um, so now to wrap it up with the side deck, um, honestly, it's kind of thrown together. Um, there's a couple of things I wish I'd rather have in place of other things, but I'll talk about it when we get there. Um, so starting off, we have the two Flying C. Um, this obviously is here for the uh, PK Fire matchup, uh, Burning Abyss, Phantom Knights. Um, Flying C can just absolutely wreck them. Um, you know, if you get it off at the right time. And the neat thing is, in this deck, uh, if you um, have your Senju comma 1, you can just continually turn after turn, uh, bounce it back to your hand, and just keep resummoning it um, to kind of put them in an awkward position. So that's why Flying C is good. Uh, then we have the two Gamma Seal. 
Um, this is here to um, you know get over um, you know dark destroyers, get over Majesty Fiend, uh, just any annoying things on board that you want to get over. Um, I just said I don't like the kaiju version of this deck, but I do like the interaction that you know like siding this kaiju in the side deck can have with your senjus. Uh, being able to summon this over an annoying monster and then be able to bounce it back with combo one is pretty good. Uh, then we have the free zombie world. Um, obviously, if you have Mask of Restricts, um, you could potentially you know, play that over these. Um, I only have the one, so I figured just why not play my playset of Zombie Worlds. Um, there are some reasons why I like Zombie World a bit more. Um, just for the fact that it's a field spell and doesn't take up uh, back row, since you do have a lot of continuous spells and traps in the main and side deck. Um, so that is kind of a plus side. And against Monarchs, the only thing they can summon um, around Zombie World, or Tribute Summon anyway, is um, Erebus. Um, but you pretty much stop every ever tribute summon, uh, you know, your, the Majesty Fiend, Vanity Fiend, uh, so on and so forth. So you're stopping most of it. And again, you're not taking up that back row. So I kind of like Zombie World uh, for that reason. Uh, then we have the third MST in the side. Uh, the triple Imperial Iron Wall, um, of course, for Cosmo. Um, the double mistake for the Search Heavy decks. Uh, pretty good against Pepe. Uh, you can side it against Monarchs as well if you so choose. Uh, then finally, we have the two traps done. Uh, it's just mostly for like that PK Fire matchup or that Random Sea Tower Knight matchup or any other matchup where there's just enough um, uh, trap cards how much you have to worry about uh, to where Trap Stun's worth to play. Um, and this is obviously better than the Kree because you don't want to shut off your um, you know, your floodgates permanently. You just want to shut them off for your turn so you can make sure you can go off. So you can use this to shut off like Solemn Strikes. Uh, you can use it to shut off um, all the uh, Phantom Knight, you know, like the... Um, was it the fog blade that negates your monster effects? Uh, things like that. So that's why I have the two traps done in there. Um, so that is it for this updated deck profile for your send juice uh, for March 2016. Um, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And do be looking forward to some more updated deck profiles here in the near future. Uh, Gear Gear is definitely one I will be doing here soon. Uh, thinking about also doing an updated Blaze Phoenix. Um, may, may be one where it's a regular Blaze Phoenix build that you guys are used to. And there may actually be one where it's the Ignite version, uh, the FDK version. So stay tuned for that. And uh, I will catch you guys next time.